Hi, it's Hans at ahappierman.com. Today's topic is healing from the effects of a verbally abusive wife. Well, first of all, this is assuming you've left your wife and you're either divorced or you're in the process of, of getting divorced uh, because if you are still with uh, a verbally abusive wife, uh, still living with her, this, this kind of stuff will not work at all. You can't heal if you're with a verbally abusive wife. Uh, it'd be like uh, you break your leg and you keep, uh, you don't get it, don't put a cast on it and you keep dancing around trying to put weight on it and doing all kinds of stuff. It, it's never going to heal, right? It, you, you can't heal from something until you stop the something that's causing the the breakage and when you've been verbally abused you you are broken you have to understand that being verbally abused is breaking you it's broke your spirit it's broke your mind it's broke your whole being so this is for you guys who are left and trying to put your life back together again and if and the first thing you know if you're intent on healing if you're intent on having a better life a happier man life in, in, in getting the rest of your life under control and enjoying yourself you will right because you've you've put your mind on it that I I'm going to be a happier man I am not going to let this situation that I found myself in dictate the rest of my life I'm going to have a great life so you put that in your mind first and uh, there's just a variety of things I did over the years to kind of heal I will admit I do not think I am totally healed uh, the, the damage the damage done to a guy or any person who's been verbally abused is pretty darn deep it's pretty darn deep and the longer you live this way the deeper the wounds are but that doesn't mean you shouldn't attempt to, to have a good life and to become happier and to get more out of the life that you would like so one of the first things I did when I left my wife is I just started taking better care of myself in general uh, one of the, the most debilitating things I did in my marriage was I didn't really sleep that much or that well. Um, I'd usually go to bed late and get up early and you know maybe on the weekends I'd sleep a little bit more but you know just the demands of life at that time were so enormous that sleeping you know six seven hours a night every night that that just wasn't a thing. It just wasn't a thing for me. Um, so I would probably say that you, you you may find yourself in this situation where your 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 wife is just making so many demands on you, and you got a job and you got all the stuff around the house that she's kind of requiring you to do that you chintz on your sleep and you try to get by with as little sleep as possible and you listen to all the charlatans saying that you don't need much sleep and uh, uh, you know the guys who uh, say they don't need any sleep and that it's ridiculous well how's that working out for you for me I had giant bags under my eyes my belly was enormous I looked absolutely horrible and I felt worse I felt worse I needed enormous amounts of coffee every day enormous amounts of junk food to try to stay alert at work. Uh, I would find myself just kind of falling asleep at random times because I'm just so exhausted. Right? So you can heal with sleep. Sleep is the method. When you're not well, what do you do? You sleep, right? And when you've been verbally abused, you are not well. You have been hurt, you've been wounded, you've been traumatized, it's affected you. I would venture to say you could probably try to sleep more, sleep the eight hours a night, every night, for months and months and months, and maybe, maybe 
you'll start to feel a little better. The next thing to do is uh, try to eat uh, better. I know when I was married, for some reason, my wife fell into this idea that uh, men shouldn't eat much meat and that the carbs were the thing to eat. And so that's what I did. I followed that and the results were pretty bad for me, pretty bad, you know. There'd be meals she'd make that didn't have any meat in them. Uh, and, and sometimes the meals were fine, right, tasty. She wasn't, she was a pretty good cook. I, but, you know, I think she fell into this crazy idea that men don't need to eat meat. Um, and of course, meat is expensive in trying to economize and all of that. That's, that's certainly a thing to be concerned with. But you'll find that a man should be eating plenty of meat every day. And the more you can eat of it, the better you're going to feel and the more likely you are to be able to heal from the other traumas that you've been living through. Um, you would want to find ways to reduce your stress in general. Uh, so, uh, 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 in, the, in the weeks and months and then uh, a number of years after I left my wife and the divorce, even when the divorce was finalized, the kids were still living with her. And so I would have to go and interact with her in, in, in with the kids, right? I would be picking the kids up or I would be doing something. I'd be dropping something off or I would go there to help the kids with their homework. Or maybe I'd even do something helping around the house which is kind of a foolish thing to do if it's not your house anymore. But anyway, so, you know, my ex-wife didn't just nice up and be nice to me for me trying to be a good dad and a good ex-husband trying to help with things. Uh, it, you know, she would take the opportunity to, you know, give me a hard time. And that would cause me stress. So the rest of my, when I'm home, when I'm in my apartment and going to work and doing my trying to do other things to enjoy my life uh, that was good when I'd go to interact with had to have to interact with her that was bad so there would be a certain the things I would do to try to relieve the stress from that would be to listen to a couple of key songs so let's say the key song to relieve the stress was Phil Collins uh, I, I don't care anymore song and I would listen to that after you know, driving in my car away from the house where she was, and and I would just scream the song and palm the steering wheel and let try to let some of the poison that she spewed at me out. And that is a great song to help you let let it out because you're going to be angry. You you got yourself into this horrific mess, and you know. You wish you would have gotten out of the marriage sooner. You wish you would never gotten involved in the first place. You wish she would, would treat you nice, but that's none of those things happened. You, 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 she treats you poorly. You had to leave. You have to deal with her to, to keep your, yourself in your kids' lives. So prepare yourself accordingly. Have the song queued up on your, uh, when you can get out to the car and escape her, uh, escape her and let the anger out because you're going to be pretty darn angry. You know, when you were verbally abused uh, the first time, you probably got really angry, but then over the years, over the times, you just passively absorbed it because you had no, you, you found that if you try to uh, battle back with her with her anger with your anger that she it just uh, Energized her made her even stronger even worse, and that's not the kind of guy you are you you're not Angry you don't want to be screaming and shouting at your wife so you eventually got to the point like I did where I just sat and absorbed it 
Uh, I just, you know, kind of sat there, absorbed the verbal abuse. Uh, it sunk into my pores. Uh, that's the trauma that I'm talking about that you're probably facing. But that was what I did. And right or wrong, that's how it, it was. I absorbed it. And then the anger. And then so even afterwards, when I am left her, going back to help the kids with the homework, I'm just sitting there doing the homework, absorbing this venom from this lady screaming and shouting at me while I'm trying to help my kids with their homework. Uh, looking back now, you think, man, it's really a bad situation you got yourself in. Happier man, yes, it was really, really, really bad. But that's the reality of what I lived through. So anyway, getting back to the song, I listened to the song and I let and I listened to it over and over again in the car ride from their place back to my place. And I'd scream and shout the song and thank Phil Collins for writing that song, thinking of uh, that poor guy going through the same kind of crazy BS that I did. Uh, and he's a famous rich entertainer, right? So it happens to all, to men, right? This happens to men. So that's a way to relieve your stress, relieve your anger. Um, uh, but eventually, the, another song that would be helpful after, after you've gotten past the point where you've, you're not angry anymore, with me, that point came after I no longer had to deal with her. But that did take some years, years to get to that point. And depending on where you are in this healing from a verbally abusive marriage with a verbally abusive wife situation you find yourself in, you're going to have to carefully choose different songs to help you. So the anger song is Phil Collins. Can't take it. I don't care anymore. The apology song is from Cher, Turn Back Time. So once you're no longer angry and there's no reason to be angry anymore, you can listen to that song and that song will help you heal. I have a nice, I have a video on, on this song thanking Cher for creating that song for us. It, she created it for me, right? Everything in the world is for you if you think about it deeply enough. Cher wrote, created that song long before I got involved with the verbally abusive wife, but afterwards, when I needed an apology from a, from a lady, the song was there for me. So that's a good song to help you heal. The other things to do is just start doing stuff for yourself. Um, when I was married, I didn't do a darn thing for myself. Everything was family, everything was for her. All this crazy stuff that she uh, thought we should do, I did. Uh, I, and I guess I just kept doing that, thinking that, well, eventually uh, there'll be something for me. And eventually it never came, so I had to leave to try to have something for me, something. For me so if you're left your wife and you're divorcing start doing things for you now you when you first leave your wife your finances are probably going to be absolutely wrecked so the things you do for yourself are going to be have to be on the extreme modest scale extreme modest right you're not going to go out and buy a new truck you're not going to get a fancy condo you know, penthouse apartment, or or you're not going to get a lake house. You're not going to be uh, traveling all over the world, going to great places. You're not going to be uh, whining and dining other ladies. You're not going to be having VIP bottle service. You're going to be broke beyond your comprehension. But you can start with where you're at, right? So when I started this. I started doing things. I would go to the Goodwills, to the uh, Salvation Army, you know, 
sec extreme secondhand shops, and I would buy like little things to improve my life on the cheap rummage sales. I'd pick up stuff from the street and just always making little improvements over time. Always doing little things like that, uh, getting by. For example, I always wanted a nice, comfortable chair in my home. So when I'm sitting on my with my laptop computer or playing with my phone or watching TV or listening to music or reading a book, I'm sitting there in a comfortable chair with my feet up. Well, now I have a uh, you know thousand dollar recliner and a fifteen hundred dollar leather couch uh, with reclining chairs. But then, no, no, then I didn't have that at all. I would go to the Goodwill and pick up a chair for ten dollars and pick up a footstool for five dollars and. Uh, basically those kind of furniture is on their last legs so I would use it till it broke throw it out go back and get something else maybe maybe the second time I'd spend twenty dollars right and the third time I'd have a little more money I could go up to fifty and I kept chaining my way up over the years and then uh, you know if, if you then if you're letting family and friends know about this you know they may uh, look for stuff for you too or give you something nice I know my brother gave me a very nice when he was cleaning out his ex-wife's trailer he gave me a real nice recliner and a really nice couch and those were significant upgrades all I had to do was go and get it somehow which isn't easy which isn't easy to get but uh, uh, that made me feel good by getting some good things and creating a, my little apartment a little more comfort for myself so that when I'm sitting there and I'm doing something um, fun but cheap, I'm comfortable, right? In, my, in the house, you know, we had a very expensive house with, you know, fancy furniture, but nothing was ever comfortable, you know, nothing was ever comfortable there. Uh, it was kind of designed to look good, but not designed for comfort. So I demand that I, my furniture be comfortable. So that's what I did. And I would go shopping for clothes, and I would buy uh, uh, a watch or something or a decent shirt. And I would try to, you know, look better, try to feel better, more comfortable, and, you know, I would get by on the cheap right get by on the cheap but always looking and shopping for myself you know, I didn't go and have to you know with my wife ex-wife you know there'd be a shopping but it'd be shopping for her stuff not my stuff and of course I would see all kinds of things I would want uh, that I really couldn't afford at the time but you know I would file that away I'd make notes in my planner book about the things I would like. Um, and it was fun to me. You know, there's lots of things that I still have on the list that I would like to get eventually. But, you know, it's my life, so I wanted to start focusing on it. And you'll find that buying, like, little things that are a slight upgrade from what you're at now will make you feel better. Okay? Just going out for simple uh, a meals or coffee or something inexpensive where somebody is, let's say, tending to you a little bit, uh, that's a nice way to treat yourself well. And you'll, you'll find that you may have to be do things on the cheap like this for a long, long, long time, depending on the terms of your uh, payments depending on the economy is what's going on you may have to live on the cheap for a good good long while and this yeah this is somewhat embarrassing your friends who are still married you know they're gonna be probably have be making good money and they're not suffering so you know they're kind of doing things that are more expensive that you kind of wish you could do but you know 
you're just going to have to buckle down and say, well, that's that's good for them. Um, I might get to that someday. I'm going to be happy with with what I'm doing. Another thing I like to do for myself was I did like to go out on Fridays and Saturday nights to the uh, the night spots, and you know I wouldn't I would not drink that much. Uh, for one thing, it's expensive, but I just wanted to uh, you know maybe you meet another lady, maybe you meet a new friend, maybe you have a good chat with somebody, a good conversation, maybe. You, but a lot of that is just kind of seeing that there is a, a life for for people beyond just working and beyond just trying to work around the house. That there is people trying to have a good time and that you're one of those people. So I liked, I like going out. I like going out on the town. I still do. Yeah, it's, you have to balance um, the dangers of drinking and partying with the enjoyment, yeah, don't go overboard, don't drink and drive, don't uh, become a drunk, but it can be kind of fun to go out. Now, certainly as you get older and older, it gets less and less, you, you kind of don't feel as well because you're getting older and the people who like to go out are younger, so you'll see what I mean when you go when you do this uh, another thing I like to do to heal is to exercise in a manner that makes sense to me and the, ma the one that makes the most sense is weight training uh, by all accounts it's the best thing uh, that a person can do for their well-being is becoming stronger I am a big proponent of the st starting strength method by Mark Ripito look look him up you know I got a lot of other videos about weight training and the success I've been enjoying but it's it's very good for you it's it will help you heal you know it's it's if you're a big strong guy who can lift a lot of weights you're gonna feel pretty good about yourself and and I certainly feel good about myself you you'll get away from being overly flabby you certainly will get away from being weak uh, you're gonna feel good about yourself now I have suffered under some injuries of course from the weight training but that's more due to my uh, faulty programming and over exuberance rather than the weight training itself I think and I wouldn't use I wouldn't want to exercise in a way that's guaranteed to get me hurt uh, so watch out for that but yeah that's those are a lot of the methods I used to heal and another maybe one more big one is just planning your future because you know where you're at today you won't you're if you're away from your verbally abusive wife you're 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 absorbing that verbal abuse that's going to eventually go away not like I said I had to deal with it verbal abuse even afterwards interacting with her but that was going away till now there's no verbal abuse in my life I've enjoyed this type of no verbal abuse for years and it's so nice not to have to deal with this that that part of your life will just just be like a far distant memory you don't even have to think about so you would be planning what you're going to do where do you want to travel to if you have job issues what kind of job do you really want what kind of business do you really want to start how do you want to earn an income uh, you might want to start doing a little bit of savings for yourself for the distant for the future what kind of vehicle did you want do you want so yeah I didn't buy this truck right after I left my wife it took me many many years of beating around with old beater cars until I could finally get to the point where I could stretch to get this but you probably if you're in it, driving around an old beater car you, you probably would put a decent car on your list and what would that car be and uh, put that on your goal list and eventually you'll get it 
uh, if you have other health related problems, if you got bad teeth, put fixing your teeth on the list. If you want nice a nice apartment, a nice home, put that on your list. If you have certain places you want to travel, put that on your list. If there's a certain things you want to do with your body, put that on your list. It could be as simple as I want to get a tattoo. It could be I want to increase my bench press strength. It could be you want to get down to a certain weight or build yourself up to a bigger weight, right? Uh, it may be certain types of clothes you want to buy, a new suit, types of jeans, kind, what kind of shoes do you like to wear, you know? Put all these things on your list. You're planning your happier, happier, happier future. And the more you plan, the more it's going to come to you, right? You're going to you're going to feel that eventually at some point your life is just all going to click into place and truthfully that's exactly what happened to me everything is just it just click 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 into place right i'm driving the vehicle of my dreams i have the job of my dreams i have a beautiful place to live i have great relationships with my kids and my family and my friends and i've been traveling extensively for, for a long time and I'm meeting new people and I'm having lots of fun because I put all this on my list and I plan for it and I'm putting more in for the future. So you can heal from this verbally abusive wife situation you're in. You can and you will if you put it in your mind and I'm pulling for you and you deserve a great life. Put that in your list. I deserve a great life. Give that idea some thought all for now.